So um, this brings us to the idea of Earth's magnetic field, um, which is generated by motion of the outer core. So let me show you about magnetic fields and how they're generated. Maybe you've played with an electromagnet, maybe not. So this video is gonna just show you how a magnetic field can be generated by moving electric charges. So hopefully you should be able to hear the sound on this as we play. And let me know if you don't. There we go again. You might already know about regular magnets. They have opposite poles that attract, similar poles that repel, and they can even attract other metal objects that don't attract each other, like these paper clips. You can also take a compass, which is itself a small magnet, and move it around near another magnet, and the needle will point in the direction of the magnetic field. So how does a coil of wire manage to behave the same way? It turns out that moving electrical charge, or current, creates a magnetic field. Watch what happens when I connect this piece of wire to a battery. It makes the compass needle move just like a magnet did, so we know the wire must be creating a magnetic field. This magnetic field takes a circular shape around the wire like this. However, the magnetic field around a single straight wire is very weak, not enough to pick up even one of these paper clips. You can make the magnetic field much stronger by wrapping the wire into a coil called a solenoid. This causes the fields around each individual turn of wire to add up to make a much stronger, more uniform magnetic field similar to that of a bar magnet like this. Okay, so what I was trying to illustrate here is simply that we can use um, moving electric charges or current to create a magnetic field. And this is how the Earth's magnetic field is generated. So I'm gonna explain now the shape of the magnetic field and how that arises. So there's a simulation that you can play with if you want to um, that explores this shape here for how a bar magnet's magnetic field is similar to an electromagnet's magnetic field. So if you take you know, your compass and you put it at all the different locations around a bar magnet, and then you uh, just you know, draw an arrow in the direction that the compass is pointing, that the red needle of the compass is pointing at every location, and then you connect all those arrows, this is what it looks like. So there's you know, many lines that come out of the north magnetic pole, wrap around, and then enter back in at the south magnetic pole. All right, so you might have seen this magnetic field shape before. Um, you can demonstrate this directly. I don't have this equipment on hand, otherwise I would show it to you as a demonstration. But if you have iron filings, then you can put the bar magnet or the electromagnet in or on top of those and then trace out these arcing magnetic field lines. And something to notice here is um, that the magnetic field is very strong near the uh, poles of the magnet because this is where all of the magnetic field lines originate and end. In other regions, those magnetic field lines appear less dense. Okay, so here's this same image just kind of superimposed on that um, iron filing, just so you can see the connection here between how you know all the magnetic filings, which act as tiny compass needles, orient themselves in the magnetic field. All right, so the Earth's magnetic field is basically just like that. It's effectively a huge bar magnet. And um, the south magnetic pole is actually near the north geographic pole. And it's actually not aligned perfectly with Earth's spin axis. So the magnetic axis isn't right on the spin axis. Um, the north magnetic pole drifts around. Uh, let's see. I'm not sure where it is right now, actually, but recently it's been in sort of northern Canada. Sometimes it's been in some of the northern parts of Russia. So the you know the the magnetic field isn't always um, completely fixed in space. It can move. The magnetic poles can drift around, and sometimes it even flips completely. All right. And so, how is this generated, and how is this similar to an electromagnet? Um, this comes down to the idea of dynamo theory. So the idea is that the, the inner core is um, very hot and it's still releasing heat left over from the planet's formation. And the outer core being a liquid is able to convect this heat. So just like a boiling pot of water, um, the hot material rises away and as it cools, then it falls back in. This convection mixed um, with 
the rotation of the earth causes the um, flow of liquid in the outer core to be organized into these sort of spiral shaped tubes. Um, so these shapes are quite complicated and, um, but overall they look, you know, generally like the electromagnetic coils, right? And so essentially it's as if you have electromagnetic coils in the outer core of the earth and those are generating the magnetic field in the same lines as we see from a bar magnet because of the shape of the moving metallic material that is generating the field. All right, so now you can see also why it is maybe not a very stable shape, right? Because it's made from a moving fluid um, and this is liable to change from, you know, changes in how that heat is um, convected out through the outer core and also changes in Earth's rotation, right? The axial tilt also changes, well, the location of the axis changes over time. So all of this liquid can be redistributed due to all of those factors. Okay, so this is an image of the magnetosphere. And the reason that we care so much about magnetic fields and wanna know if other planets have them is because it's very protective for life on Earth. So the sun generates um, not only light, but also charged particles, which we call the solar wind. And our magnetic field shields us from this solar wind. Um, the shape of our magnetosphere is also shaped by the solar wind. So it's shortest you know, in the direction that the solar wind is traveling from, and it's kind of swept back in an arc-like, arc I don't know, fluid-like shape um, in the opposite direction. And the uh, effect of the solar wind can be seen in the form of aurora, which is like the fake background I have behind me. Um, and so those aurora are caused when these charged particles uh, encounter the magnetic field, they can spiral along and funnel in to the earth along those magnetic field lines. And they drop down um, into the atmosphere. And in the atmosphere, they can interact with molecules in the air, causing them to glow. So the different colors that you see come from different species of air molecules um, and different energies of charged particles. Okay, so based on this idea, uh, just take one minute to think about this uh, question and just type your ideas into the chat. Don't hit send yet. Uh, but the question is, why would we have more aurorae during or near the polar regions based on this image. Okay, good ideas I'm seeing here that it's due to the amount of the magnetic field in those regions. And this um, picture doesn't make it as clear as the our last picture uh, here, that there's a higher density of field lines near the polar regions. And so you can imagine almost these iron filings as being the uh, charged particles from the solar wind funneling along those magnetic field lines. If they're free to move, here they're not because you know friction with the surface that they're sitting on, but if they were free to move, then they, they would all migrate along those magnetic field lines to the poles. All right, so that's why we see more aurora near the poles because the magnetic field lines are funneling all of the objects in that direction. There's a high density of field lines there, so there's more particles available to interact with the atmosphere. <laughs> 